Hi Eva. Hi Esther. Hi everyone. Um, I'm Esther. Here's Eva Taylor. Um, we are Eva is actually in Wees for a workshop and um, staying with us. So I thought I grabbed the opportunity <laughs> to ask her a few questions. So um, a few questions on the business of yoga because this is what Eva specializes in. And um, so Eva, also from my experience and I know from a lot of other teachers' experience, we find it hard to kind of think of yoga or in the past, I definitely have found it very hard to think of yoga as a business mm -hmm. or teaching as a business, as if taking money for yoga somehow taints the beauty of the practice or the spiritual spirituality part of the practice. Sure. Any thoughts? I do. And thank you for having me. I love <laughs> being in Holland. It's really fun. And um, anytime we get to spend extra time together, I take the opportunity. So thank you for having mm. me. And yeah, it's a really good question, you know, this concept of spirituality and, and making money. And it is really hard for a lot of teachers. And I think one of the biggest things about teaching yoga that makes it complicated with regards to actually making money teaching yoga is that you're so fulfilled, right? You love your job, right? You're happy. You, you teach a class. You have a moment with a student. They're growing. They're developing. You're growing. You're developing. You're practicing yoga. So you're getting something, right, from this job that you're doing that isn't monetary and so that I think is a really tricky tricky place because when you you can be very spiritually fulfilled and have a totally empty bank account mm -hmm. and that's what what we're trying to to support right and find a middle ground um, with all of the work that we're doing and with the course that we put together it's like how can you still be spiritually fed and fulfilled and love your job and make a living while doing it okay great mm -hmm. thank you that makes a lot of sense Eva, you've answered kind of the spirituality side of it, but what about um, the business side mm -hmm. of it? The, um, so, yeah. The business, yeah. It's funny because so many teachers that start teaching never really think about the business side mm -hmm. of it to begin mm -hmm. with, right? And again, it goes back to, to loving your job, right? Mm -hmm. You love what you do. So you fall in love with yoga and you take a training and you go sign up, you know, and you, and you graduate and then all of a sudden... You're out in the world as a teacher and the moment, and I tell all of our, our trainees and graduates and anyone I can get in the room with who's just getting ready to start actually teaching, hey, guess what? Congratulations, you finished your teacher training and you're also a small business owner, mm -hmm. you know, and sometimes the eyes get really big and they go, wait a minute, what? But the truth is, is that to be a yoga teacher, whether you, whatever your goals might be, there is an element of having to run a small business, right? So you are your own small business and you're responsible for all of the things that come with it, right? Keeping up with your, op how you how are you operating, right? How are you communicating? How are you finding jobs? How are you filling the classroom, right? All of that is actual business. If I want to teach, I do have to market myself. I do have to yeah. sell myself. I do have to make invoices and sign contracts and sometimes have uncomfortable conversations. conversations. Yeah, so it's part of it, but I believe that we just don't have enough information sometimes when we're kind of getting out into the teaching world, and that's what makes it makes it really hard. And I think a second piece of that also goes back to loving loving it so much is that sometimes <clears throat> we have a bit of like rose-colored glasses around what the yoga world is actually like. Mm. And so it's uncomfortable when you think about having to conduct business Right. It's sort of like it's like yoga exists in some fairy fairy tale land, you know, and well, and people would never do that to me because they're a yogi. You know, these kinds of this kind of fantasy we make around what teaching yoga is like the the, the core, you know, it is a profession. Right. Mm -hmm. It's an it's an industry. And I know not everybody likes those words. And it doesn't mean you can't have beautiful relationships and that we can't do better, you know, and and strive to be better as people, right? That's why we're all here living the practice. And at the same time, you know, it's a business. Yeah, it's a business. It is. Um, Eva, another question. Um, being an entrepreneur can be challenging at times. Do you have, as we all know, do you have any, <laughs> any advice to stay grounded and authentic? Yes. Being an entrepreneur is the hardest thing I've ever done and also the most beautiful and the most rewarding thing I've ever done in my life. And the way I stay grounded is to remember why I started, mm. right? So you really have to, we say, you know, sort of keep your eye on your why, 
right? Remembering why you started this in the first place. Why are you teaching yoga, mm. right? Why are you teaching? Because it's that initial purpose behind everything that you're doing that will get you through the hard days, mm. that will get you out of bed on the early mornings, that will keep you um, keep you going, you know, when you remember the reason that you're doing it. And for many of, many of us, it was to, to help mm. people, you know, to care for people, to help people see a way to live better, yeah. be better, do better. Be happier. Yeah, be happier. I would also say to remember that making mistakes is part of it. Yeah. You know, um, there is no company that is successful, no teacher that is successful, whatever success means to you, <clears throat> right? We define it all in different ways, but everyone, right? I'm sure we could have a whole nother video about all the mistakes we've made, yes. <laughs> you know, over yeah. the past however yeah. many years. And so, you know, to remember that as an entrepreneur, this sort of <clears throat> trial and error is very normal. So if you go for something and it doesn't quite work, it doesn't, it doesn't mean anything necessarily. No. It's part of the process so you can yeah. learn and correct and make changes and do it differently next time. Yeah. So that sort of understanding that being an entrepreneur is not a perfect no. perfect business. Perfect lineup. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, and some things work and some things don't. Mm. And that that's okay and, and normal, yeah. I think, is also something that helps me stay grounded because yeah. I go, okay, great. Well, that was a complete disaster. Yeah. But... Let's do it again. Let's do it again. And a bit different. And a bit different. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. No, and I, I really agree with you on this one. There is, I've made many mistakes on a business level. And, um, and, and the reason we've kept going and the reason Eckhart Yoga is there and the reason we're successful to a degree is because I've kept going. Mm -hmm. And I've started, you know, I've always just took the mistake on the chin and just did it again yeah. and tried another time and did it a little bit differently. And that is a super helpful advice and really important to know as a beginner, as when you begin a business mm -hmm. and, and even when you're into it and you let yourself be stopped by a mistake and you think, oh, this is not my thing. I can't do it. I have to stop. No, you just have to keep going and try it again. We're <laughs> still you. here. Still here. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> okay. Eva. What is the most valuable lesson you've learned in 2019? For me, this year in particular was a sort of 10-year mark mm -hmm. with, uh, with Yama and sort of this, you know, way I'm making my business and making my living. So there's a lot of reflection this year in particular. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that the biggest lesson that I learned was to ask for help when we start a business, you know, or you're out there as an entrepreneur, definitely in the early stages, maybe the first handful of years, you have to do everything mm -hmm. on your own because you don't have any money maybe to find someone to help you or whatever these things might be, you know, or it looks like you can't get help, mm -hmm. right? I do think there's always a way when you say, I need help, mm -hmm. that you can find the support that you need, whether you have a budget for it or mm -hmm. not. Yeah. And then the second lesson I have to tell too, because they're both like right there tied together. The second one is this sort of concept of right now I'm calling <clears throat> radical honesty. Mm -hmm. So not just telling the truth, right? Let's say you're looking at your numbers, right? Mm -hmm. your, your, how much money you're making in the mm -hmm. year, right? Not just looking at that, looking at it and processing it right but what is it what are those numbers really saying mm -hmm. and are you really okay with what they're saying and mm -hmm. you know just sort of thinking about like in every relationship and every way you're interacting mm -hmm. like is that the truth mm -hmm. like the real truth like the whole truth because yeah. I don't know what you guys I was telling one of my friends this the other day and they were like it sounds like you lie a lot and I was like no mm -hmm. I actually never lie no but am I telling the whole, yeah. like the whole truth, like the, do you know do what I, I mean? Do I want to see the whole truth? Yes. Almost that, isn't yes. It? Am I opening myself to what this really means? Yes. Am I not trying to make it better somewhere deep inside or not feel, yeah, I know what you mean. Like it's, editing it's, it, no, you know? No, exactly, editing it. It's opening your whole system up for what the truth means. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now the big question. Dun, dun, dun. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> what does the yoga industry look like uh, at the dawn of 2020? 2020, I mean. 2020. 2020. Um, 
at the dawn of a new decade mm-hmm. in, in yoga. Um, I think it's a very exciting time because yoga is really reaching a popular, you know, sort of growth, you know, sort of you think about a wave, you know, in the ocean, yoga is sort of reaching this, the high point, you know, okay. of, of the waves. So there's a big swell. There's a lot of people that are mm-hmm. interested in living better, feeling better, yeah. being happier, longevity, all of the things that we know that, that mm-hmm. yoga contributes to and supports. So I think this new decade is very exciting because there's so many people who are curious about and the practice. Who need it. And who need it, exactly. Yeah. And, yeah. and it's so useful. And so that is amazing. So mm-hmm. this actual real growth where every sort of maybe everybody's doing yoga sometimes we feel like everybody's doing yoga because we in the world we're in the world yeah but it's really not true and the most of these um students are going to be beginners like Mm. brand new to the practice and I think Mm. that's really exciting like I think about my first class like a million and a half years ago Mm. you know but just that impact and that shift that I had in my life um because of it so I think it's very exciting to just imagine like all of these new people who are going to get the practice. Um, I think that technology is going to continue to really push the envelope of how people do yoga. Mm-hmm. You know, you guys have been pioneering that space for a while. And, you know, I mean, I was on the subway the other day in New York and there's like, a, I don't know how I feel about this, but it's like a glass screen I don't know if you've seen it it's called the um, the mirror okay. something like this I think and it's a teacher I could bait it's like a hologram it's like right. I can hologram Esther into my living room uh-huh. and you teach me a class it's like a robot techno mm. I don't know it's totally in- virtual virtual really crazy mm. but this is not not gonna go away right mm. we're we're humans so we're gonna yeah. keep finding cool ways to yeah. to to communicate mm. So I think that that as the decade keeps going, we're just going to see even more interesting technological ways to practice yoga. And I think that that's very cool. I think it's really cool, right? We might as well, we can't stop it, right? Mm -hmm. So we might as well not be opposed to it. And at the same time, I think we have to work really hard to stay um, in connection connection. with each other as people. And that we do remember that yoga originally was practiced Teacher to student. Teacher to student. Yeah. And that while we can have some fun with it, with the crazy stuff that's coming, that we don't forget exactly to connect. some benefits, but 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 also maybe let yoga be a message of connection, mm-hmm. even if it is through a hologram. Yeah. Yeah. Or virtually, just really important to keep that message going out as a yoga teacher, because mm-hmm. yeah, in the end, it's only connection that that. That also, that's a big contrib- contributor to happiness. Yes, absolutely. Very big contributor to you happiness. Know, we, need to, yeah. we need to be together. Yeah. And um, I think it's also increasingly important as our population grows mm. that we also remember um, <clears throat> where we've come from. Yeah. So, at, you know, it's if you think about any um, art form, mm. music or, um, you know, painting, you you start by studying the the masters, right? Mm. You start by understanding. I mean, we're in Holland yeah. right now. It's amazing art history here, mm. you know, and you you learn this as you are becoming an artist yeah. and and going out into the world. And so, I think it's super important. And this is just a yeah. little bit of my personal mission. I think also to make sure that as we grow and as the technology evolves, <clears throat> evolves that we we remember the the source. Yeah. of where the practice came from and the root teachers and yeah. the root lineages and yeah. that we do our work, yeah. you know, to um, to stay connected yes. to that. Yeah, lovely. I like that. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Answer. We should make a hologram. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. The next. <laughs> the next thing. <laughs>